I want to think today about VE Day and what it still has to say to us. And I'm going to use some thoughts of someone who lived long before VE Day. Because the 8th of May, which was the day we consider VE Day, is also the Saints Day for Julian of Norwich. Julian was a lady, despite her name. And she spent most of her time locked in her room, writing down what she believed God was saying to her. One of the books that she wrote was called Revelations of Divine Love. And amongst the things she said about Jesus in that book was this. He did not say you shall not be troubled. He did not say you shall not be travailed. He did not say you shall not be deceased. But he did say you will overcome. That came out of, out of an assurance that whatever happens in our lives, God loves and God loves us. And maybe the most famous thing she wrote came from that assurance. She said, all shall be well, and all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. If we go back to the 8th of May 1945, the message was that despite six years of war, people could still dare to look ahead and maybe things would be well. They spent that six years surrounded by death, destruction, fear, separation, shortage and worry. Much worse than we have been facing over the last few months. But now they dared to hope once more. They dared to believe that all shall be well. After the pain, there was a prospect of healing. After the conflict, there was a prospect of reconciliation. And after death and destruction, the prospect of life and love. No doubt they felt it hard. No doubt they felt it hard to say all this out of the destruction of war. There are times for all of us when it's still hard to say and harder still to believe and maybe especially so at the moment but moving forward requires a step of faith our world has so much where we could say it's broken but in recognizing God's love for us and God's love for the world then we can have the hope today that so many would have felt on VE Day in 1945. I've been discussing a specific Bible reading over the last few weeks when I've been talking to other officers and this is the reading, just a few verses from the message. Hebrews chapter 10 verses 22 to 25. So let's do it, full of belief confident that we're presentable inside and out. Let's keep a firm grip on the promises that keep us going. He always keeps his word. Let's see how inventive we can be in encouraging love and helping out, not avoiding worshipping together, as some do, but spurring each other on, especially as we see the big day approaching. We need to grasp a few special promises from those verses. First, you are presentable to God, inside and out. Whatever you've been through, whatever you're currently going through, God looks at you and sees somebody that he loves. Inside and out. It doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter if you're wearing your uniform or your pyjamas. It doesn't matter if you're feeling strong in your faith or a complete failure. God loves you completely. What a brilliant starting point. Secondly, we have the promise that God will keep his word. On VE Day, every person that celebrated rejoiced in peace. But the war still went on in Japan. Tens of thousands were still to die and millions have died in war since. But God kept his promise to bring peace 
as the promise of peace that we get from God is peace in our hearts and minds, not a lack of war. Despite the war and fury that goes on around us, we can know peace. John chapter 14 and verse 27 says this, I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. Life today might seem anything but peaceful and secure. We have so many with real worries. As we worship last Sunday, our friend went to be with the Lord because of the coronavirus. I know that many of you still have these concerns for the future, what those days will look like. You don't know, I don't know, but those times are in God's hands. And if that's the case, we don't need to be fearful. He loves us now and into eternity. The third important part of that Bible reading was the challenge to be inventive. As the war ended, many things changed. The government changed. The National Health Service was founded. Where would we be now without that having happened? The welfare state grew. For our country, most people found that they had what they needed. But during that same time, many forgot the God who loved them. Maybe our challenge to be inventive is to use our energies in a new way to ensure the message of real peace and real love reaches our neighbours, our friends, our families. The Bible reading said a big day is approaching. Let's ensure that we approach that with God. Then all shall be well, and all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. God bless you.